Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. I'm Robinson Smith. I'll be providing our commentary for the duration of this coverage. We're broadcasting from the Space Flight Now News Bureau here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. To all those joining from around the world, we'd love to wish you a very happy International Day of Human Spaceflight. Though this is not a crewed mission that we are covering this evening, today does mark the anniversary of the day that the first human did go into space, Yuri Gagarin. Also, the anniversary of STS-1, the very first space shuttle mission launching from here in Florida. Tonight, though, we have a Starlink flight on tap set to go up T minus 58 minutes, two seconds and counting. Our Space Flight Now editor, Stephen Young, of course, running the technical operations of the broadcast this evening. Our Adam Bernstein out and about to track the rocket this evening, also doing some still photography tonight. Our Michael Kane is also going to be popping into the live chat, so be sure to tell him hello. And if you're not already following our photography team on their social channels, you can find Adam Bernstein at A Burn NYC, Michael Kane at MD Kane Jr. You can find Space Flight Now simply by searching at Space Flight Now. We're around on X, of course, as well as Threads, Facebook, and where you're vis visiting with us right now on YouTube. should also have some tracking assistance tonight from our friend Pete Karstens with Max Q Productions. In the center of your screen is the Falcon 9 rocket from SpaceX, the workhorse vehicle of the company. In the center of Space Launch Complex 40, otherwise known as Slick 40. We're now T minus 56 minutes, 40 seconds and counting away from the 25th dedicated mission launching SpaceX's upgraded Starlink V2 mini satellites this year alone. SpaceX is targeting a T-0 liftoff of the Falcon 9 tonight at 9.22 p.m. Eastern. For our friends joining us from around the world, that is 0122 UTC. Certainly appreciate the 1,400 of you that are joining with us live at this early stage of our coverage this evening. If you haven't already, and as you're settling in, be sure to hit the like button share the stream to allow more folks to find this live coverage and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to space flight now here on youtube it's free and easy to do so and when you do click the bell icon and turn on all notifications that way you get alerted whenever we start these live streams you don't miss a beat also you'll be alerted when new videos drop Now is a good time to subscribe to Space Flight Now as we are less than a month away from the launch of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft on its first crewed mission, speaking of human spaceflight. Butch Wilmore, Sonny Williams heading up to the International Space Station, currently targeting liftoff from Pad 41 over at Cape Side on March 6th, setting up for a docking at the ISS on March 8th. We have quite a bit of coverage between now and then, and we'll have some pretty robust day of launch coverage as well. We would love to have you along for the ride, and if you're subscribed to Space Flight Now, you can see that coverage as it comes about. We're also powered by a very wonderful channel member community here on YouTube. So thanks to folks like uh, Cappy Cross, Calistia Lee, Cats in the House, which is a great handle, uh, Miles High, Annette P, Glenn A, JC Martinez, Mirage, Count to Money, another great handle, and a whole bunch more. Channel membership comes with a number of perks, including discounts at our online shop, shop.spaceflightnow.com. Access to member only videos here on YouTube, and the ability to watch all of our Cape Face launches in 4K. Perhaps I misspoke uh, a second ago. I did mean uh, they'll be launching the CFT, the crew flight test mission, will be launching in May, or May 6th. 
Not sure if I said something else, but May 6th is the tar current target date. Also want to thank our wonderful moderators for helping out in the live chat. appreciate all of you guys for helping us keep things moving smoothly and allowing people to have a good conversation as we continue on with the count. As we're getting things started, I want to thank Calistia Lee, one of our wonderful channel members, for gifting 10 Space Flight Now memberships, getting us off on a good foot with some generosity there. Really appreciate that, Calistia. And if you're one of our newest channel members, welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. And be sure to thank Calistia in the chat if you haven't already. Last but not least, you can use the YouTube Super Chat feature if you have a comment or question, or if you'd just like to be supportive, like one of our channel members, Christopher Jones. Good to see you again this evening, sir. And with that, it is an off-asked question, and so let's go ahead and get this started tonight. With a little trajectory chat as we are now T minus 52 minutes, 27 seconds and counting. The Falcon 9 rocket gonna be lifting off from Slick 40, Space Launch Complex 40 over at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Once it leaves the pad, it will fly in a southeasterly trajectory, heading east of the Caribbean. Following stage separation, the first stage booster will land on one of SpaceX's three drone ships and tonight, the one they have on deck is a shortfall of Gravitas. A little bit further downrange of the map, the payload fairings will be jettisoned as well and recovered by one of SpaceX's two East Coast recovery vessels. And tonight, the one they're using is Doug. Of course, it and the other vessel, Bob, named after former NASA astronauts Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley. The duo will the Demo-2 mission, kicking the commercial crew program for NASA into high gear with the first human space flight of that mission. And the crew flight test of Starliner will now give, or will soon give, I should say, NASA a second crew vehicle that can ferry its astronauts to and from the International Space Station. As I was just mentioning, the fairing halves, this is an image of what that process looks like as they float down toward the either Atlantic or Pacific ocean waters. Glide down under parachutes and are scooped up by a recovery vessel. SpaceX saves about $6 million per recovery as noted in this slide here from a company presentation earlier in the year. SpaceX, in fact, just started the process of using flight proven payload fairings on national security missions, starting with the launch of the USSF-62 flight just yesterday. That mission featured payload fairings for a flight while that mission went off from the West Coast. The fairings actually flew for the first time over here on the East Coast, supporting the launch of a Falcon Heavy mission. That was USSF-52, otherwise known as the seventh and most recent flight of the X-37B space plane. Currently still on orbit, Last time that space plane went up, it stayed in or in its orbital uh, plane for more than 900 days before returning for a landing at the launch and landing facility managed by Space Florida. TBD, how long the space plane will remain up in orbit this time around. Here's another image of what the recovery process looks like, scooping those fairings out of the ocean waters. Of course, it's not simply a matter of how many times a payload fairing has flown as to whether and how it is reused, but it's also the conditions under which it flew and the shape it's in when it is recovered. We're now T minus 49 minutes, 11 seconds and counting. We're just about 10 minutes, a little bit, or uh, about 11 minutes actually away from the point at which the SpaceX launch director would nominally make the call on the start of propellant load. 
If they are in a good position to get things started, though, they can make that pulling call a little bit ahead of time. But the fueling process remains the same, so let's go ahead and pivot to that, let you know what the countdown process is going to be like as we continue on through the next 48 and a half minutes. As mentioned, that T-minus 38 is when that call on prop load happens. If the go-ahead is given, fueling starts with RP-1 being loaded onto both the first and the second stage of the rocket. RP-1, just another term for rocket-grade kerosene. At the same time, liquid oxygen is loaded on board the Falcon 9 first stage. The T-minus 16 minute mark, locks load happens on the second stage, but before that comes about, at roughly T minus 20 minutes and 20 seconds, we'll see the so called big vent as the fueling lines are chilled at the strong back. T minus 7 minutes, the chill down of the nine Merlin engines gets underway. It involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and the turbo pumps. And it helps protect the engines from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. About six minutes out, the first stage kerosene tank should be full. Then at T-minus four and a half minutes, we'll see the strong back retract begin. Starts with the clamp arms just beneath the payload fairings opening up, and then the transporter erector, or the strong back, will recline about a degree and a half away from the Falcon 9 rocket, and it stays in that position until liftoff. At that point, it pulls back in a much more rapid fashion, clearing the way for the vertical climb of the Falcon 9. About three minutes out, LOX load should be wrapped up on the Falcon 9 first stage, Two minutes to lift off, same is true of the second stage. And at that point, the Falcon 9 is fully loaded with one million pounds of propellant. SpaceX fuels its rocket in a manner known as load and go, fueling practically to the point right before they lift off, which is the reason why as fueling has begun, they are committing to that T0 when they do not have the option or opportunity to hold once fueling has started. In the final 60 seconds of the countdown, the control of the countdown is handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computers. The propellant tanks are brought up to flight pressure. SpaceX launch director gives their go for liftoff at 45 seconds out. The engine ignition command is issued at T minus three seconds. And if all nine engines ignite and are healthy, the flight computer will give the command for the hold down clamps to release the Falcon 9 at T zero. Again, targeting 9.22 p.m. Eastern, 01.22 UTC, or in 46 minutes and counting. T-minus 45 minutes, 35 seconds and counting. Kind of leapfrogged over the weather, if you may have noticed that. Uh, not an intentional passing by, but in fact, the weather really not much of a watch item today as the 45th Weather Squadron forecast a greater than 95% chance of favorable, favorable weather for liftoff, with the only concern being the liftoff winds and the upper-level wind shear being tracked as between low and moderate levels. So generally speaking, that's just about as good as you can get. Really, the only better is the 24-hour turnaround, which obviously we don't want to see a scrub. That is not optimal for anybody. But in the event that SpaceX would need to target a 24-hour turnaround, the launch window on Saturday, April 13th, opens up at 9.04 p.m. Eastern, 0104 UTC. And the weather also greater than 95% go. And the primary concerns, and this is a rare thing to see, none. There are no primary concerns for a 24-hour turnaround, not even cumulus clouds, which is kind of remarkable. Sounds like a good beach day to me.
also as just a point of note, SpaceX is running its countdown for this mission from its Hangar X site here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. It's a facility where they refurbish Falcon boosters and prepare them for future flights. This is the case with the very sooty vehicle that you see here on your screen. With SpaceX preparing to launch a Falcon 9 booster for a 20th time tonight. That's a first. And hopefully it will be successful as they're pushing the bounds of reusability as company leaders have said they test the outer limits of their vehicles on these Starlink flights so if you want to see the most dynamic things from the flight leaders look for the Starlink flights T minus 42 minutes, 12 seconds and counting. Let's take a look back at the live chat here. I want to thank one of our wonderful uh, channel members, Nelson Reyes. Good to see you again this evening, sir. And our thanks to you for gifting 10 Space Flight Now memberships. Really appreciate that. And to our 10 newest channel members, welcome aboard. Glad to have you with us. And if you haven't already, be sure to thank Nelson in the live chat. We hope you appreciate your time as a channel member. As just a reminder, when you are gifted a channel member, I believe it lasts for a month. So if you do enjoy being a channel member and you like those perks, you can go ahead and look at the options for continuing on with channel memberships. And we'd love to have you as an ongoing part of our membership community. Speaking of channel members, uh, Josh King with a very generous $20 super chat. Really appreciate that, Josh. Thank you so much for that. Josh asking, is Sierra Space's Dream Chaser space plane bigger or smaller than the X-37B? That is a good question. I personally have not had the good fortune of seeing the X-37B with my own eyes. Adam and I did travel up to Sandusky to see the Dream Chaser space plane, and it is quite sizable. I don't have the specs of the two of them right at my fingertips so I don't want to give you bad information but I believe the Dream Chaser is slightly bigger as uh, Stephen is reminding me as, as far as the length they both fit inside Falcon 9 payload fairings so one would not be dramatically longer than the other. Sorry, that would be a uh, Vulcan that will be flying Dream Chaser, not uh, Falcon, for now at least. But the Dream Chaser's wings also do need to fold up in order to fit inside the payload fairings. That is, I don't believe, the case with the X-37B. In the meantime, we're just about a minute and a half away from the call on the startup prop load. We do have some video to roll here from the run-up to this mission that you see here. This is the same booster that you see in a vertical position on the right-hand side of your screen in that live box. This is 1062 in the SpaceX fleet, rolling out to pad 40 ahead of this mission. Not an uncommon thing to see uh, SpaceX boosters rolling by here at the press site. But this will be the first time we see a booster rolling on its way to its 20th mission. 
and even that won't be that much of a news item. Rolling on down the road, I believe SpaceX has two other boosters that have reached 19 flights, if I'm not mistaken. Though this booster will be joined as the flight leader, likely in the not-too-distant future. Right about this point, SpaceX launch director will be taking that pull in the start of prop load. And hopefully we will get word from SpaceX that fueling has begun. But as we await that point, and again, fueling will start at the T minus 35 minute mark. But what you want to look for, if you see just to the right of the Falcon 9 rocket, there's the crew access tower. And if you see those white lights, along the right-hand side of the tower, and if you go up one, two, three white lights, and then bring your eyes left to the booster itself, and you see that slightly lighter gray band near the base of the booster, that's the point where we'll start to see some vapor and a little bit of frost forming as the super cold liquid oxygen is loaded on board the Falcon 9 first stage LOX tank. And that'll be a good visual indication that fueling has in fact begun if we have not yet heard word from SpaceX at that point. We usually start to see some evidence of fueling about at the T minus, oh, I'd say 33 minute mark, once we've had a couple minutes of fueling. T minus 35 minutes, 50 seconds and counting. I want to thank another channel member, Valerie Jones, for a $10 super chat. Really appreciate that, Valerie. And I will echo her sentiments saying, hit that like button so the algorithm pushes this video up to more people. Yes, if you are among the 5,100 who have not hit the like button on this video, that would be very much appreciated if you could do that for us and allow more folks to find this live coverage as we continue on through the count. As mentioned, this will be the 25th launch of Starlink satellites this year for SpaceX. Here's a coverage map as it currently stands. Most recently, the company added Albania as a customer. More than 70 countries around the world have access to the Starlink internet service at this point. The darker blue shaded countries are ones where service is either pending or will be activated in the near-ish future. Countries in gray are where Starlink service is not available. There are 23 Starlink satellites on board this flight, again the 25th in this year. Each of them clocking in at about 1,760 pounds or 80 kilograms. The solar panels unfurled, they have a wingspan of 100 feet or 30 meters. They use argon hull thrusters for in orbit maneuvers, as opposed to the previously used, slightly more expensive Krypton hull thrusters. They were built in Redmond, Washington, near Seattle. They'll be deployed at about 200 miles or 320 kilometers in altitude at a 43 degree inclination. We're now T-minus 33 minutes, 44 seconds and counting. At this point, SpaceX should be a couple minutes, or about a minute and a half or so, 
into the fueling process. We have not received direct word from SpaceX that uh, fueling has started, but again, we'll look for those signs of fueling that we mentioned before. Signs of vapor, you see that light gray ring that I mentioned. That's where we'll keep a close eye out for signs of vapor, a little frost ring forming there. As we await and watch, want to thank Jack Wagner for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Jack. Really appreciate that. Chicken in from Alaska. T-minus 32 minutes, 32 seconds and counting. I want to thank Josh King for another $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Josh. Appreciate that support. And Josh asks, will the Falcon Heavy ever fly from Pad 40, or is that just a 39A exclusive? As far as we know, the Falcon Heavy will likely only fly on the East Coast from Pad 39A. There has been talk of plans for Falcon Heavy capabilities from out on the west coast of Vandenberg Space Force Base. And Stephen can correct me in my ear if I'm wrong on this, but I believe that is also part of a uh, condition of being able to compete for the National Security Space Launch uh, Phase 3 contract is being able to have eventually Falcon Heavy capabilities from the west coast as well as the east coast so that SpaceX is able to launch into all of the orbital regimes that are requested by uh, Space Systems Command, part of the U.S. Space Force. Yes, that's he was just reminding me that uh, they're in the process of acquiring Slick 6 over at Vandenberg, which will not only have Falcon 9 capabilities, but will also be outfitted to support Falcon Heavy launches. Also worth noting, as part of the NSSL requirements, SpaceX will need to have the ability to both horizontally and, more importantly, vertically integrate payloads as part of the Phase 3 contract. And so that capability likely coming to Slick 6, maybe at some point coming to one of the pads here in Florida. We'll have to watch and wait to see that. We're now T minus 30 minutes, 16 seconds and counting. At this point in the count, assuming all is moving on track, SpaceX will be loading cryogenic helium into the pressure vessels on the first stage. The helium is used to pressurize the main propellant tanks during flight. That same process will also happen on the second stage at about the T minus 25 minute mark. We are not seeing the signs of fueling that we would have expected this deep into the count. They may be adjusting the T0 time. SpaceX does have opportunities until 12.48 a.m. Eastern today. And we do have official word that the new T0 is in fact shifting to the right. It is now 9.40 p.m. Eastern. 140 UTC. We are resetting our countdown clock. Stand by. We'll be back in just a moment. The 
countdown clock reset. We are now T minus 46 minutes, 23 seconds and counting. So we are about eight minutes now from the point at which they will make this the uh, call on prop load tonight. And again, if there are additional adjustments, we will let you know. We are currently T minus 42 minutes and counting. Taking a look at the live chat, want to thank a few more folks for their support as we continue to roll on through our coverage of the Starlink 6 49 mission tonight. Want to thank Mouse the German for a 6 euro super chat. Really appreciate that, Mouse. Saying greetings from Germany. 
I love and value the technology, but how will the world ever deal with the debris and space for future generations? Well, both the European Space Agency and NASA are looking at ways to tackle the issue of space debris. That is something that is obviously of great importance to the health and success of not only the satellites that are all around in multiple orbits around the Earth, but of course to the humans that are flying in space. One way that SpaceX looks at this problem is after it deploys its payload, in this case the Starlink satellites, there will be a third and final burn of the Falcon 9 upper stage engine, the Merlin vacuum engine, that will push it into a graveyard orbit so it will burn up and to not create additional space debris. And in fact, just earlier this week, NASA rolled out uh, what it calls the first part of its so-called integrated space sustainability strategy. looking at ways to be more or increasingly more responsible in orbit. I'll go ahead and throw a link to that if you'd like to do some light reading as we continue on through the count. Put that in the live chat here. There are companies and other agencies that are looking for ways to further clean up space debris, whether it is essentially acting as tugs to bring older defunct satellites out of their current position and into a place where they can burn up in the atmosphere, or potentially refuel satellites so as they get on in age, they don't themselves become space debris, but can continue on in their mission. So there's not a one-size-fits-all solution to the ongoing problem of orbital debris. It is complex and multifaceted, not to mention the great variety of sizes of debris. So. You know, if you have something much larger like a rocket upper stage versus a defunct satellite versus a piece of a satellite, like um, when we were talking about the launch of the latest military weather satellite, the WSFM, that launched yesterday as a replacement for uh, older military weather satellites, some of which over the uh, 2000s and 2010s have broken up on orbit. Those created much more, uh, much smaller fragments of orbital debris and it is difficult to find ways to capture and, and safely contain those and for now there isn't a, a great solution to that but that is something that a lot of companies are increasingly working on uh, different and creative ways to solve that problem so long-winded answer uh, again I put a link in the live chat here to NASA's latest unveiled strategy of how they're working to tackle the problem. So hope that answers your question, Mouse, and for any other folks that have questions about orbital debris. We're now T-minus 36 minutes, 55 seconds and counting here on this Starlink mission. We are once again about uh, just under two minutes from the point at which SpaceX should start fueling this Falcon 9 rocket, if in fact they are in position to do so.
As a reminder, once again, if SpaceX needs and they have not started fueling, they have backup opportunities through this window until 12.48 a.m. Eastern. 0448 UTC. Hopefully they will not need that full length of the window, but it is available to them should it come up. Taking a look back at the live chat, want to thank Ruth Laral, apology or Ruth Laral, excuse me. Now apologies if I mispronounced your name, Ruth, but appreciate the super chat and the kind words saying great coverage. Thank you. Joining us from north of Tampa. Hopefully you've got clear enough skies that once this Falcon 9 rocket launches tonight, you'll be able to see this. Also want to thank Jeffrey Bew for a $10 super chat. Thank you, sir. Who says, feeling guilty? Not, not sure why I'm feeling guilty. There's no reason to feel guilty about loving this channel. He says, uh, keep up the good work, guys. I'm a space nerd from the Apollo days. SpaceX has gotten me excited about the future of space travel again. Well, it's always great to hear about the things that kindle folks' interest in space exploration. And we love to be emissaries of getting to see how these rockets work and launch and bring those opportunities to you. For those who just want some additional context, if you're in Central Florida and can see it for yourself, or if you're elsewhere in the world, and we are your eyes and ears to be able to bring this coverage to you. It is our privilege. And thanks also to Andrew Cochran for a $5 super chat. Thank you, Andrew. Saying, from Connie and Paul watching in North Carolina. Lovely to have the Carolinas on board. We're now T minus 34 minutes, 26 seconds and counting. At this point, fueling should be underway on the Falcon 9 rocket. Again, assuming SpaceX did make the call to go ahead and start fueling tonight. Hopefully we will get confirmation from SpaceX that fueling has in fact begun. But again, we will look for those signs of fueling that I mentioned earlier.
We're now T-minus 31 minutes, 24 seconds and counting. And we're fairly confident we are seeing vapor in the area that I mentioned earlier near the base of the Falcon 9 rocket. About in between those second and third white lights on the right-hand side of the rocket. Yeah, we're definitely seeing some vapor now, which means SpaceX is fueling the rocket and they are going for an attempt at 9.40 tonight. And we do finally have word that fueling is underway from SpaceX. So our eyes do not deceive us, in fact. And for a 20th time ahead of a launch, this booster tail number 1062 is fueling up and preparing to lift off. T minus 30 minutes, 30 seconds. We are now T-minus 27 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Just a couple minutes away from uh, cryogenic healing being loaded onto the pressure vessels of the second stage. As mentioned, this will be the 20th time that a Falcon 9 first stage booster is flying. This new one, or this one here, becoming the flight leader for SpaceX. While we have time before the big vent comes about, let's go ahead and run down this Booster's illustrious history, tail number 1062 in the SpaceX fleet. The dates you see here are derived from the Universal Coordinated Time, or UTC, liftoff time and dates, just as a point of note. The debut of this booster came about on November 5th, 2020. It was the launch of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle, or SV number 4. Built by Lockheed Martin, this was the fourth of the newer generation of the U.S. Space Force's GPS constellation. It has the nickname Sacagawea, named after the Shoshone woman who helped guide Lewis and Clark on their expeditions in the 1800s. All of the GPS satellites are named after 
famous explorers. Next up was June 17th, 2021, with the launch of the GPS-3 space vehicle number 5 satellite. That GPS satellite is nicknamed Neil Armstrong, of course the first person to set foot on the moon, and very appropriate given that we are noting the International Day of Human Spaceflight today. The third flight of this booster was on September 15th, 2021. It was the first time this booster actually launched humans to orbit. That was the four-member crew of the Inspiration4 mission, which launched inside the crew Dragon Resilience. That Dragon preparing to fly once again coming up over the summer, supporting the Polaris Dawn mission. And it is undergoing quite a bit of testing and upgrades at the SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, as it will support the first ever commercial spacewalk. That mission led by a businessman Jared Isaacman and pilot Scott Kid Poutit. The fourth flight of this booster came on January 6, 2022. That was its first Starlink flight, Starlink 4-5 with 49 version 1.5 satellites on board. The fifth mission came on April 8th, 2022. Another crew mission. This one was the Axiom-1 private astronaut mission to the International Space Station. Of course, its commander, Michael Lopez Alegria, just completed the Axiom-3 flight earlier this year. Flight, six, or flight number six came 21 days later. It was actually 21 days, 6 hours, and 10 minutes later on April 29th, 2022. So far, this booster still holds the record for the shortest turnaround time for a first-stage booster. Not only that, it became the new uh, record for that mark, beating the record previously held by B-1060 by nearly a week. The seventh flight came on June 8th, 2022 with the Nilesat 301 mission. An Egyptian satellite there. Flights 8 through 12 were a series of five Starlink missions. Those were Starlink 4-5 on July 24th, 4-27 on, or excuse me, there we go, so we're falling behind. There we go. 4-27 on August 19th, 4-36 on August 20th, 5-1 on December 28th, 5-4 on February 12th, 2023. The 13th flight came on March 9th, 2023. That was the OneWeb 17 mission, launching a batch of 40 of OneWeb's broadband internet satellites. This would be the third and final dedicated launch of OneWeb satellites for SpaceX. OneWeb completed its Gen 1 constellation with a launch from the Indian Space Research Organization. Fun fact, those satellites were actually built right here on Merritt Island at the Airbus One Web Satellite Facility. It's actually right across the street from Blue Origin's rocket factory where they are working on their New Glenn heavy lift vehicle right now. Next launch of this booster was for the Arabsat 7B, also known as Batter 8 mission, launched on May 27, 2023. Telecommunication satellite was built by Airbus for Arabsat. Now provides C and KU band coverage for Europe, the Middle East, and Central Asia. And flights 15 through 19 were all Starlink missions. Those were 6-7 on July 8th, group 6-23 on October 18th, 6-30 on November 28th, 6-38 on January 29th, 2024, and 6-44 on March 16th, which of course brings us to today. We were getting ready to see the 20th launch for this first stage booster, that being Starlink Group 6-49. That launch coming up in 21 minutes, 51 seconds and counting, and we're just a little under a minute away from the start of the so-called big vent as the feed lines are chilled prior to second stage liquid oxygen load. As the count rolls merrily along, want to thank the 
more than 16,000 of you who are joining with us live. Really appreciate you spending part of your Friday night with us. If you haven't already, a great way to help support what we do here at Space Flight Now is quick, easy, free to do so just by hitting the like button. Sharing the stream allows more folks to find their way into our live coverage as we come into the final 21 minutes of the count. Now T minus 20 minutes, 13 seconds and counting. And you can see the so-called big vent now just getting underway. A good sign, again, that fueling is in fact moving along nominally. Now we should see if all continues to go smoothly. A liftoff in now less than 20 minutes. As the big vent continues for the next roughly minute and 15 seconds or so, I want to take a look back at the live chat. Thank a few more folks for their support this evening. Thanks to one of our wonderful channel members, Jesse Mason, for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Jesse, for the super chat and for supporting us with channel membership. Really appreciate both lanes of support. And Jesse asks, how did I get started doing the live broadcasts? Well, Specifically doing broadcasting with the Space Flight Now crew uh, joined the company last uh, summer after spending a little more than two years as a reporter with Spectrum News 13 here in Central Florida. The slightly longer answer is... I graduated from Northwestern University up near Chicago in a town called Evanston. Earned a degree in broadcast journalism from the Medill School of Journalism there. And from 2013 to 2023, spent that intervening decade in local news 
reporting in newsrooms in southern and northern Alabama and then made my way down here to central Florida. Turned my passion for space into a full-time job here with Spaceflight Now and it's been a heck of a ride ever since. Working with Stephen, Adam, and Michael. It's been pretty stellar, if you'll pardon the pun. We're now at T-minus 16 minutes, three seconds and counting. Just a hair ahead of second stage liquid oxygen loading, which is just now getting underway. want to thank channel member Egghead23 for being a member with us for four months. Really appreciate that, Egghead. They say, hi, Mr. Robinson. Very kind of you to ask. How's your mom doing? Keep up the great work. My mom is doing quite well over in California. A little bit too far north to see the Vandenberg launches, but she enjoys popping into the broadcast from time to time. Appreciate you asking. Our thanks also to Charles Harrington for a very generous $20 super chat and a very kind comment saying greatest job to our commentator. Well, thank you so much, Charles. I really appreciate you uh, supporting the channel at that level, man. Much appreciated. Hello to you, Janine, for joining us. Really appreciate you. Say hello, Will, in the Space Flight Now crew. And Moss with another six dollar or six euro super chat, excuse me, asking uh, what sanctions are in place for uh, violations of or causing additional space debris. Um, well, our company is a journalism venture, so we don't have any direct impact or influence on the companies who contribute to additional space debris. So that is very much not our purview. That is up to different government bodies to regulate and deal with that and I'll preface this by saying I am not a lawyer nor am I an expert specifically in space law although that may be an interesting conversation we could look at having with an attorney that deals more specifically with that a little bit down the road look for a conversation on that in the future actually that could be a good video to come up here on the channel Our thanks also to uh, Kellen526, the thumbs up Corgi, and a $5 super chat. Really appreciate that, Kellen. We're now T minus 13 minutes, 29 seconds and counting. T minus 12 minutes, 44 seconds and counting. Let's talk about the launch timeline. What well, we're expecting once the Falcon 9 rocket leaves the pad. Lift off again, targeting 9.40 p.m. Eastern. Just a slight slide into the launch window tonight, but nothing too egregious, fortunately. T plus 1 minute, 12 seconds. The rocket will pass through max Q, or the point of greatest aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Then in the about T plus 2 minutes and 26 seconds, we'll hit a few different events in fairly rapid succession. First will be first stage main engine cutoff, or MECO, followed by stage separation four seconds later. And then seven seconds after that will be the second stage engine ignition, or SES-1, where the Merlin vacuum engine will ignite for the first time on this mission. T plus 3 minutes, 1 second, the payload fairings will be jettisoned, exposing the uh, Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space for the first time on this mission. Then at T plus 6 minutes and 10 seconds, there will be the first stage entry burn, lasting 24 seconds, slowing the booster down dramatically as it makes its way 
towards the drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. T plus eight minutes and five seconds will be the first stage landing burn beginning. Setting up for a drone ship landing at about T plus eight minutes and 28 seconds. At that point, just a little bit after that, the Merlin vacuum engine will cease firing and go into a parking orbit or a cruise phase until T plus 54 minutes and four seconds. There will be a brief two second burn of that upper stage engine, setting up for Starlink satellite deployment at T plus one hour, five minutes and 13 seconds. And again, following this, there will be a third and final burn of that upper stage engine to drive it back into the atmosphere where it will burn up, helping to eliminate the risk for creating space debris on this mission. SpaceX's Starlink satellites are also intended to burn up as they exit their usefulness, and so they reserve enough fuel on board each Starlink satellite so once it gets toward the end of their life, they can lower their orbit to the point where the satellite will burn up and not uh, create an uncontrolled re-entry into the atmosphere potentially endanger people or property on the ground. But again, the satellites are designed to easily be able to burn up as they're making their re-entry in a controlled manner. course the vehicle that will be launching in T minus twenty or excuse me, T minus nine minutes twenty four seconds and counting is the Falcon nine. Stands at seventy meters or two hundred twenty nine feet tall with a diameter of three point six six meters or twelve feet. The majority of that, two thirds of the rocket is made up by the Falcon nine first stage. This booster has flown nineteen times before, going for the big twenty today. Tail number 1062 in the SpaceX fleet. At the base of the first stage are the nine Merlin engines, which burn rocket-grade kerosene and liquid oxygen, producing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Around the engine compartment are those black carbon fiber landing legs that will be used to land the first stage on the drone ship, a short fall of Gravitas. Above the first stage is the inner stage. It's a composite structure consisting of an aluminum honeycomb core, which is surrounded by carbon fiber. In the image you see there on the right-hand side of your screen are those deployable hypersonic grid fins. They are titanium winglets that provide stability and steering for the Falcon 9 as it comes back through the atmosphere tail first like a big old dart towards the drone ship. At the top of the inner stage are three mechanical latches that attach to the second stage. At first stage, managed to cut off high-pressure helium is used to release those latches and four pneumatic pushers ensure a clean separation. The second stage engine nozzle is also housed safely inside the interstage adapter until stage separation. Speaking of that second stage, the upper stage, powered by a single modified Merlin engine called a Merlin vacuum engine, or an MVAC engine, is equipped with a large nozzle which is optimized for burns in the vacuum of space, hence the name. It produces more than 200,000 pounds of thrust and it will be fired twice on today's flight, placing the 23 Starlink satellites into their intended orbit. And it burns the same propellant mix, kerosene and liquid oxygen, same as the first stage. And again, it will ignite a third time as a deorbit burn, driving that upper stage back into the atmosphere where it will burn up, helping to eliminate the risk of creating unnecessary space debris. Finally, up top are those payload fairings, made up of a carbon composite material. They are 13.1 meters or 43 feet tall, 5.2 meters or 17.1 feet in diameter. The two halves of the payload fairing will be recovered a little further down range from where the first stage lands on the drone ship. They gently splash down under parachutes and the recovery vessel Doug is gonna be on standby to scoop them up out of the Atlantic waters return them back to Cape Canaveral where they will be refurbished and reused. We're now at T minus six minutes, 33 seconds and counting. 
or about 30 seconds into the point where SpaceX is thermally conditioning the Merlin, or uh, yes, the uh, Merlin engines on the Falcon 9 first stage, blowing a little bit of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and turbo pumps. And as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, our friend Pete Carson's with Max Q Productions, helping to provide tracking views of the Falcon flight tonight. And we do have some spectacular views of our own satellite of Earth right here. They're looking live at our very own moon, which put on quite the show at the beginning of the week with a total solar eclipse that spanned from Mexico up through Canada. Gave more than 31 million folks living in the path of totality, in addition to many other people, quite the stellar show. We actually had a good conversation about this process during our live news from the press site show earlier today. We were fortunate to be joined by Elizabeth Howell, reporter with Space.com and friend of the network here, Bill Harwood with CBS News. So if you haven't already, you can go ahead and check that video out. It is up on YouTube right now. You can watch the video if you have the time. It's about an hour long. Or if you got some errands to run, you can just go ahead and pop it on in the background, listen to it more podcast style as you're going about your day. We're T minus four minutes, 52 seconds and counting. At this point, we're just about to start piping in some SpaceX mission audio as pad views from the rocket are coming in to us now. Strong back retract has started. You hear that call out that the strong back retract sequence is underway. The clamp arms are opening up just underneath the payload fairings. And then, as you see here, the transporter erector reclines a degree and a half away from the vehicle, stays in that position until liftoff, which point it will pull back in a much more rapid fashion to clear the way for that vertical climb. We're coming up on the three minute mark before liftoff. I want to thank the more than 44,000 of you who are joining with us live. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button. Allow some more folks to find their way to this live coverage as we come into the final minutes of the count. Stage one locks load complete. Good call out from SpaceX. The last fueling milestone will be to wrap up liquid oxygen load on the second stage, which should come in about the next 30 seconds or so. In the meantime, I want to thank a few more folks for their support uh, while we have a moment here. I want to thank Aerospace Rocketry for a $10 super chat. Thank you, Aerospace. Saying great job to you all. Really enjoy the channel. Bob Witter with the $5 Super Chat, one of our wonderful channel members, saying we are so lucky to have the best commentator. Makes us all smarter. That is very kind of you, Bob. Really appreciate that. And Dustin P. Craig for a $10 Super Chat as well. Thank you, Dustin. Stage 2 locks load complete. And with that call out, the Falcon 9 is now fully fueled with 1 million pounds of propellant. It's preparing to take off in the next minute and a half. That's why we'll briefly welcome John Beasley to channel membership. 
at the pad leader level and remind our channel members that you have the ability to watch this launch in 4K, as is the case with all of our channel members. We will come back to your support on the other side of the launch, but we are less than two minutes away, so we're going to keep our ground focus gas on the vehicle. The call for ground gas closeouts, one of the final steps before liftoff this evening. As we're coming on the final minute. At T minus 45 seconds is the point in which the SpaceX launch director will give their go for liftoff. As a point of note, you see our countdown clock at the upper right hand corner of the screen. A little Falcon bit, 9 is in startup. A little bit different than what you see there at the bottom of your screen. Oh, you can see the moon actually just off to the left hand side from this shot. It's lovely framing. Uh, our clock is in real time. The number Let's you see there launch. from SpaceX as we hear the go from launch. You'll see that again, but that is on the slight delay. We are 30 seconds from liftoff. Twenty seconds. And here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engine ignition. And lift off. Lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket. This first stage booster climbing above the skies of Florida for a 20th time. B-1062 becomes the flight leader for SpaceX. Now 20 seconds into flight for this 20 time flying booster. Now about 40 seconds into flight, let's listen to the roar of those nine Merlin engines. Falcon 9 now traveling faster than the speed of sound and getting some great views from our tracking camera here at the press site. It's passed through max Q. Some great images from our friend P. Carson's with Max Q Productions. We're coming upon a number of events in fairly rapid succession here in about a minute or so. We have the call for MVAC engine chill. They are thermally conditioning the Merlin back you mentioned before it ignites. At T plus 2 minutes 26 seconds will be main engine cutoff for Miko. That will be followed shortly by stage separation, second stage engine start. The fairings will deploy a little after 3 minutes into flight. Some great views from P. Carson's here. Less than 10 seconds from Miko now. There you see Miko. Stage separation. And ignition of that Merlin. And some views from the Falcon 9 onboard cameras there on the right-hand side of your screen. Again, because the SpaceX feed is on a slight delay, that's why we're seeing those events a hair later than what we're seeing in real time. You can see the hypersonic grid fins deploying there on the Falcon 9 first stage. And on the left, views from Pete Carson's, you see those payload fairings deploying now. And the same thing from the Falcon 9 onboard feeds. Those Starlink satellites now exposed to the vacuum of space for the first time in this flight. And 
you see the payload fairings just drifting off screen. Some great tracking work by Pete and Adam tonight. Now coming up on the fourth minute into flight here. The next milestone coming up will be the first stage entry burn beginning. That burn lasting first stage is trajectory nominal. About 24 seconds or so. With the skies as clear as they are, we may be able to see the entry burn from our ground cameras here. I'll have to stand by to see if that is in fact the case tonight. See some stars streaking by in Pete's view. So far, everything appearing to be nominal with this mission so far. Now a little more than five minutes into flight. As you'll likely notice, SpaceX is toggling between a couple different views on the upper stage Merlin vacuum engine. The reason for that is they use those two views to keep an eye on both sides of the engine in case there are any issues that crop up during flight. Now a little more than five and a half minutes into this mission. We are now less than 30 seconds away from the entry burn beginning. A little more than six minutes into flight coming up on that entry burn. Just a few seconds. And Pete's got that entry burn. Well done. Hey, George, well, entry burn okay. startup. Great views of the track or the entry burn tonight from Pete Carson's with Max Q Productions, and in our tracker, Adam Scott it as well too. End of the entry burn there in real time. Stage two FTS is safe. Stage one entry burn shut down. Good call outs from SpaceX. Stage one, trajectory nominal. The flight termination system on the Falcon 9 upper stage has been deactivated. It is no longer needed at this point in the mission. You can see with that entry burn completed, the Falcon 9 first stage traveling increasingly slower. You see that at the bottom left hand side of your screen, the speedometer plummeting rapidly. Coming up at T plus eight minutes and five seconds. Stage one transonic. Is when the first stage landing burn will begin. It's coming up in just a little over 10 seconds from now. As you heard the first stage traveling below the speed of sound. Now eight minutes into flight. Stage one landing burn. And there you see the start of the landing burn. We'll be getting views from the fal or from the drone ship on the right hand side of your screen momentarily. Landing lid deploy.
and for a 20th time. Stage one landing confirmed. You heard it there. You see it with your eyes. Booster 1062 has successfully landed on the drone ship, a shortfall gravitas. And back shut down. Nominal orbit. And with those good call-outs, uh, congratulations to SpaceX for marking a big milestone in being able to push its Falcon 9 first stage boosters out for the first time to 20 flights. SpaceX has noted that they are looking potentially to extend that out to 25 flights. So we will see if Booster 1062 will be the first one to reach that milestone, or if there are others that are going to be creeping up to try to take that title as well. SpaceX does have two other boosters that are 19 times flown, 1060 and 1061. Obviously, SpaceX is going to be pouring through the data to try to learn a lot about this booster and its flight today, its landing. And certainly the hope is that the lessons were learned from the recovery and transport back of booster 1058 and this booster will make its way safely back into Port Canaveral intact. And with a good liftoff and a good landing, now a little over 10 and a half minutes into flight, we'll come to our mission stats to close things out. But do want to note that the next milestones in this mission are coming up at the T plus 54 minute, four second mark, when the second stage engine will ignite for a two second burn, setting up for Starlink satellite deployment at T plus one hour, five minutes and 13 seconds. We will actually jump the gun mentioning the stats. Want to come back to the live chat and thank the folks that have supported us on our coverage tonight as we are always very much appreciative of all your ongoing support for these live launches. Our thanks to SG, one of our wonderful channel members, for the super chat, $4 here with a very uh, happy and surprised hippo, it looks like. Thanks, SG. Uh, Angelina Ngo for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Angelina. Who says, hello from a pipe organist and an organ builder from New York City. That's very cool. I play, I do not play the uh, pipe organ, but my brother is a very skilled uh, pianist. So I... Very much appreciation for that type of instrument. A thanks also to channel member Trinity, a.k.a. Mama T, for $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Trinity. Appreciate your support this evening. I'm Lita with a $5 super chat, another one of our wonderful channel members, saying hello, Will, and the Space Flight Now family. It was good to hear your story. Oh, thank you. And Lita says, hi, Will's mom. Always great coverage and photographers. Love our mods also. Thanks to all. Another channel member, Butterfly, saying, Will, your mom must be pr uh, proud. And I know she is. I am very uh, blessed to have a lot of success in our family. I have some very ambitious uh, siblings, of course. We just passed National Sibling Day. So I will give my brother and uh, sisters a quick shout out and all of their success. One sister is a business owner out in California. The other sister is dean of a theater department in Toronto. And my brother is a very successful voice actor who, for those who have been watching the new X-Men 97 series on Disney+, Plus, he is the voice of Bishop, among others. Come back to the live chat. Thanks to Robert Smith for a $2 super chat. Says, thanks for the great streaming. Thank you, Robert, for your support. 
Frankie Hernandez with a very generous $20 Super Chat. We've got a, a string of 20s here, so preeminent thank you to everyone supporting us at this level. But start with Frankie, who says, First Loft with the Family, which is fabulous. Visiting from Charleston, South Carolina. Enjoy all. Thank you so much, Frankie. Really appreciate you uh, sharing this first launch opportunity with the family. Hope they all had a wonderful time. And if everyone was listening into the commentary, hello, Hernandez family. Hope you enjoyed the launch and look forward to you joining with us in the future. Our thanks to John McBride for also a very generous $20 super chat. No message, but just uh, some support here, which is very much appreciated, John. Thank you, sir. Nelson Reyes with another $20 Super Chat channel member. Thank you so much, Nelson, who says, Thanks, Will, and the Space Flight Now crew for the great coverage. And, yes, the, the team works hard to make these launches happen, so very appreciative to the folks that are not on the mic but make this coverage happen behind the scenes. Thanks to Kevin Campbell for also a very generous $20 Super Chat saying, Go SpaceX. We've got a few gifts of Spaceflight Now channel membership. I'm going to try to pronounce this right. Sui Moltan. hope I didn't just completely butcher that, but thank you for gifting a Spaceflight Now membership. And also thank you to channel member Marcus Gallegos for gifting five Spaceflight Now memberships. Thanks to the both of you. And if you were just gifted a channel membership, be sure to thank them in the live chat. Speaking of channel members, United Nations Space Command has been a channel member for eight months. Thank you so much, UN. Glad to have you with us for the past eight months and look forward to eight months more. They say, love your streams. Keep up the good work. We certainly will with support of channel members like you. Hunters Run Adventures for the $5 Super Chat. Thank you so much, Hunters. And uh, moments later, Hunters Run Adventure became a channel member, actually, at the pad leader level. Glad to have you with us, Hunters. Welcome aboard. Sheila2872 with a very generous $20 super chat. Simply saying, go. Thank you, Sheila. Really appreciate the support this evening. Our thanks also to another channel member, Calistia Lee, for a very generous $20 super chat. Thank you, Calistia. Saying thank you as always, Will, Mods, and all Spaceflight Now for the fantastic coverage. You are all the best. Very kind. Another channel member, Mitchell Wilbur. Also a very generous $20 super chat saying, perfect from the beach at Vero. What a show. Yeah, it looked like a pretty ideal evening to watch a launch from a lot of places around Central Florida and just beyond. Our thanks also to Duff Chick for a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Duff. TCAL4054 with a $20 super chat. Thank you so much, TCAL, for supporting us at this level. Who says, watch it with my daughter, Danilin, or Danilin, apologize, apologize if I mispronounced your daughter's name, uh, and also Grace, or Danilin Grace, there we go, watch it with my daughter, Danilin Grace, another beautiful launch, thank you for your support. Randy Palmer with a $5 super chat, thank you so much Randy, Space Ranger with a $2, thank you Space Ranger, love the handle. And our moderator, Astro Joe, gifting a Space Flight Now membership. Good to see you this evening, Astro Joe. Hope all is well with you. I see Astro Jen has also been with us here in the live chat. Not sure if uh, Stephanie B is also clocking in tonight or if it's just uh, too late there in Australia, but appreciate the four of you, Astro Joe, Astro Jen. Stephanie B. and Rusty Shackleford for helping out in the live chat. Thank you as always. And I think I've got everyone. So with that, let's go ahead and turn to the mission stats. Everything now in place.
Alrighty, so this was, of course, the historic 20th flight of Falcon 9 Booster 1062 in the SpaceX fleet. The 323rd Falcon 9 launch to date. This was the 38th Falcon 9 launch of 2024. The 266th Falcon Booster reflight, or the launch of a booster that has flown at least once. This was the 39th SpaceX launch of 2024, including the launch of Starship earlier this year. This was the 111th SpaceX orbital launch in the last 365 days. The 179th orbital launch from Pad 40. And the 234th overall launch from Pad 40 as well. Moving on to the bar chart version of that, you can see SpaceX continuing to climb up against their previous year's record. This was the 65th landing of a booster on the drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. SpaceX's 230th drone ship landing and the 297th overall booster landing, getting very close to 300. Finally, moving out to some industry stats, this was the 27th orbital launch from Florida. The 41st orbital launch from U.S. soil, the 44th from U.S. rocket company, and the 72nd overall orbital launch from around the globe. A couple of launch failures in there. Here's where the pie chart stands. U.S. with SpaceX leading the way on this. 44 missions, representing 61% of orbital launches. China in second with 15 launches, or 21%. And uh, covered up by the image of the strong back, but Russia with six launches on the year. We do have some images from our launch photographers this evening. This liftoff photo from our Adam Bernstein tonight. Marking the historic launch of the Falcon 9 first stage booster 1062. We also actually have some launch photography from our Michael Kane tonight as well. This image here coming from his vantage point in St. Cloud. We got one more from him. There we go, one more from him. And he also has a very cool streak shot, which we will put up on our social channels. Oh, actually we may have it ready for you in just a second. Stand by, we should be able to bring this in momentarily. There we go. One last shot from the St. Cloud area here in Central Florida. And you can see some planes moving in the picture as well. Obviously the brighter streak is the Falcon 9 rocket. You see that little break in the action there on the SpaceX Falcon 9 streak was where stage separation will have occurred. curve is more than likely making its way back into uh, landing at Orlando International Airport MCO for those familiar. And with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our coverage this evening. want to once again thank all of our wonderful moderators in the live chat, Astro Joe, Astro Jen, 
I know Rusty Shackelford was working with us earlier today, and a shout as well to Stephanie B. down in Australia. I want to thank our friend Pete Karstens for providing tracking views from down south of us here in the central Brevard County area. Our thanks to our launch photographers. You saw some of their work just now, and if you'd like to go ahead and give them a follow on social media, you can find Adam at Aburn NYC, Michael Kane at MD Kane Jr. If you didn't happen to catch their eclipse photography from earlier this week, their photos are up on their socials from that as well as many other launches that they'll be covering with us in the near future. Our thanks also, of course, to our editor, Stephen Young, helping run the technical aspect of the broadcast behind the scenes here. See the strong back, back up right here at the pad as SpaceX is working to turn around this pad with ever-increasing frequency tonight. It happened to be a new turnaround record for this pad. You can read more about that on our website, spaceflightnow.com. Most importantly, want to thank you for being with us on a Friday night, kicking off your weekend with our live launch coverage, a historic flight above a Falcon 9 booster for a 20th time. And our thanks to That Cat Will Stray for a $5 super chat right at the buzzer, saying thanks kindly for the coverage. Have a great weekend, all. And that's a good message to take us out with because I want to thank you for being with us on this Friday night. For all of us here at Space Flight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. We'll have more launches coming up next week, including, I believe, Starlink 6-51 in a few days. And, of course, on this International Day of Human Spaceflight, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with our coverage of the next crew launch. That would be the Starliner crew flight test no earlier than May 6th. But until next time, be good to yourself, be good to others, and we will see you then. Good night.